This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and uh, this one's got a problem. It doesn't power on at all, so it's totally bricked as is. Now typically with no power on scenarios, it's either something very simple or something very complex. You've either got serious hardware failures in front of you or maybe you just miswired something and it can be that simple. So we're gonna try to solve this puzzle as efficiently as possible. You can see it is overall uh, very nicely balanced. The rig is very clean. The CPU GPU combo makes a lot of sense. We've got a 240 mil AIO up front, uh, ATX motherboard, NZXT case, EVGA power supply, looks really good. Just a shame that it all of a sudden decided not to work anymore. Hello there and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new here, just uh, yeah, check the video description for relevant info. Know that everything you see us do here, all parts replacements, the troubleshooting process itself is all done free of charge. We do not charge these viewers at all uh, for what you see because we can make money off the back end, off of just filming the process, uploading these videos to YouTube and the like, and I think that that's a uh, a very fair trade-off because, well, folks have to drive out to meet me for one, and they have to typically wait a week or two before they get their systems back. It has been dragging out just a bit lately because uh, well, we've had to order replacement motherboards and things for older platforms. I don't have access to new, old motherboards. You have to order them secondhand, usually from eBay, and uh, yeah, shipping takes several days most of the time. Anyway, uh, hopefully we don't have to replace anything major here and it's just something super simple, but that's what we're gonna find out in this video. Are you ready? Stay with me. Introducing Kyoxia's new XG8 series NVMe SSDs featuring 5th generation Bix Flash 3D TLC memory and PCIe 4.0 compatibility. With capacities up to 4 terabytes and support for optional security features like TCG Pyrite and Opal, Kyoxia drives are perfect for your next desktop, server, or workstation. Sequential reads and writes reach up to 7,000 and 5,800 megabytes per second respectively and are suited for ultra-fast program, OS, and VM load times, bundled with peace of mind warranties and at affordable price points. Kyoxia's comprehensive PCIe 4 SSD portfolio continues to grow with products offered for a wide range of applications. Check them out, including their new XG8 drives by clicking the link below. Let's get started then. Normally you'd see a monitor in front of me, a little portable monitor, and that's because what well, we wanna see if in fact we do get a post or not. But in this case, because we're told that it's not even powering on, I don't really think there's a need for that. It'll be fairly self-evident uh, if it doesn't want to play ball. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, I had this mat here and I'm kind of not digging it anymore because it's making all these rigs sit crooked on the desk. So I'm just gonna scrap it for the rest of this video or maybe we'll throw it back up there later. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and connect power and let's see what happens if anything. Yeah, <laughs> a whole lot of nothing. So what I'm gonna do is pop open the right panel. We're gonna check all of the wiring. That is probably the most obvious cause uh, for a system not powering on at all. We'll also check the power supply. One of the first things I wanna check in this case, because if that is dead, then that would explain why nothing else is getting power here. Now I know the camera is not gonna pick this up very well, but I did get behind here and verify that all of these modular cables are connected to the correct headers on the power supply side. Also made sure they were slotted all the way in. Uh, we've got smaller cables here, SATA power and the like that are all sound. Same goes uh, for these fans. They're all plugged in, nothing looks shorted. Uh, on the other side of this uh, motherboard tray, 24 pin, 8 pin EPS, uh, PCI 8 pin, all of that looks really good. So. We're gonna focus on the power supply next. I've got our Passmark PSU tester connected and uh, we're gonna see if it throws any codes. Uh, hello? This, this should be powering on. So, I mean, what the heck is going on here? So uh, just so you can confirm, right, we've got this connected to uh, well, we've got it connected to the power supply on this side. I, I pulled out the CPU uh, 8 pin just to see if that was the issue. Just kind of playing around with different connections here. And uh, still nothing. I've also triple, quadruple checked. I feel like I'm missing something here. We've got power on. We've got the cable plugged in. Yes, we have power coming from that. Quick way to tell, right? It's working. So, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think the power supply is totally cooked. Like, so cooked to the point where it's not responding at all to this, which I've never seen before. I hope that the rest of this rig is not cooked. Hopefully, surge protections were in place for this unit. If that is what happened, if there was some sort of surge and the unit just cooked itself, it didn't take the other components with it. That's what they're designed to do. They should be able to do that. 
but uh, you know, acts of God, lightning strikes, things like that can definitely overload circuits, even ones with mitigations in place. So I'm going to now connect a known and working power supply to this rig, and we're, we're just gonna see if it powers up. If it doesn't, then we've probably got more than one dead component here. And at that point, we're looking at, ugh, I mean, depending on how many components we have to replace here, you might have to replace the entire platform, the graphics card, who knows? I mean, everything connected to power. The AIO even, <sighs> not good. This mini rat's nest here is basically that new power supply. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and power it on as is. We've got the motherboard powered, a 24 pin, eight pin EPS, and the supplemental eight pin for the card. That's really all we need here. We're gonna jump the pins manually as well to bypass another potential failure point with the front panel, uh, which I did verify off camera wasn't actually the cause but I still wanna leave it apart just so that we can rule out anything else being wrong with this rig. I'm not gonna bother connecting a monitor just yet because we're just looking for lights at this point. If we can get lights and fans spinning, that's uh, already a breath of fresh air and a great sign. It works. Wow, that's a really good sign. I'm checking, uh, we've got a series of debug LEDs above the 24 pin and they all just flash to boot and now they're all unlit, which is a good sign. I think the system's posted. It's running quite loud. That could just be a BIOS setting, uh, fan curves that need to be adjusted. It is running very, very loud. But still, <laughs> this is awesome. So that tells me that uh, the power supply likely did its job. Again, it isolated itself and its failure from the remainder of the rig, which is always a blessing because you don't wanna to have to replace other components on top of the unit. Uh, if the unit failed on its own, just because, that's a separate thing. I obviously can't prove that here unless there's something physically wrong, maybe a manufacturing defect that we can point out when we take this out of the case. Um, but again, it, it's gonna be difficult to tell without returning this to EVGA and letting them look at it. The unit might actually be under warranty still, depending on when this unit was built. So, I'll reach out to them. I'm not all that worried though, because I can very easily replace the unit in here with one that I have free of charge. Of course, I, I get tons of power supply. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. We'll take his out, put a new one in, and then we'll try for a post and uh, we'll see if it boots into Windows. It should because from what I was told, the system was being used for gaming for a very long time before it crapped itself. And I think what I wanna give this person for a PSU swap is this Seasonic Focus Plus Gold unit. This is an 850 watt unit, I believe, and it's pretty compact. This is one of the best built power supplies in this form factor, I think in the business. Seasonic builds really good stuff. And uh, I've used this actually in my personal rig for a little over a year without any issues at all. Uh, the other cool thing about this one is that it comes with custom sleeve cables specifically made for this unit. So this is gonna add a bit of color to his rig. I think all around it's gonna be a pretty sweet upgrade. This old CPU eight pin cable for whatever reason was zip tied to, <laughs> it was like zip tied like five or six times. The rest of this, uh, I think, oh, gotta get my screwdriver. Dang it, I'm so unprepared. Let's slide this out now. Yeah. We are not done with you either. We're gonna be looking at the insides of this thing to see if we can find any physical damage. Still kind of confused why it wouldn't power on at all. It's very strange. We're gonna slide this beefy unit right on in there. We've got our 24 pin connected. Eight pin EPS is looking good up top there. And our supplemental eight pin for our graphics card. Now I didn't realize that I actually have two bridged eight pins together in this unit. And there's not much you can do about that because uh, well, these are metal cable combs and I really don't want to break these. They look really clean and all I've done here is just shove the extra 8 pin right next to, well, where another port would be. It's not hurting anything there. It's not touching any fans or whatever. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I think the bridge cables actually look better anyway, a thicker cable run to the card. Now in my quest to cable manage as best I could behind the motherboard tray here, I noticed that, uh, well, we've got a cable here that actually runs between the motherboard and the tray underneath it. You can see this cable just uh, just disappears behind here. And normally I'd say that's probably okay. There's a decent amount of clearance. You can run some thinner like ribbon-like cables behind there, but this one is a pretty fat USB cable. And I really don't like having something like this behind the tray because you've got a lot of solder points that are really sharp behind these boards. And if one of those points punctures this cable, you could have a pretty nasty short. I'm gonna use just a few zip ties here. I wanna clean it up like the way you had it before. It was pretty clean. Let's see. Maybe one down here somewhere. Got a zip tie point. I lack the location of it. 
So keep our CPU 8 pin and our rear exhaust fan a bit more tame. We just tuck the cabling in up top. I don't really think we need a zip tie up there. And uh, yeah, already looking pretty darn good. I think we are ready to turn this system on officially with a monitor connected. We've got everything peripheral wise connected as well. Just triple checking fans, all that look good. RGB header up top. All right, let's see what happens. So here we go. Power on at the rear, power on up front. Okay, bit of a delay. <laughs> Heart skipped a few beats there. All right, fans are all spinning. RGB is working. We get a post right away. That's a really good sign. Looks like we're loading into Windows as well. I'm not sure what storage drive he has. I didn't see a, an external drive, so it looks like uh, probably got an NVMe. And there we go. Super fast load time. This thing is ready to go. She wanted to boot up so quick. She's been down for a good while. So uh, this is awesome. It was literally just a dead power supply. And I, I cannot... <laughs> I cannot stress how relieved I am that it was only a dead power supply. Sometimes other things get taken along with them, but not in this case. So it looks like the PSU did its job. I also just noticed that the system is running significantly quieter now, and I think it was because the SATA power cable for the AIO was disconnected before. Uh, so maybe the pump wasn't working at full speed. It sounded like it was. I could, I could feel in the tubes that fluid was churning, but uh, maybe the fan curve from the built-in unit kicked in. But uh, it's much quieter now, so I don't think we need to do any tweaking at all. Speaking of this power supply, how about we open it up and see if anything noticeable is wrong with the board? We're gonna do a quick physical inspection before calling it. Uh, again, I, I imagine there's not much we're gonna be able to do here. And uh, the power supply in question probably costs like 50 or 60 bucks. So I mean, we gotta think about the amount of labor input as well when making these kinds of decisions as a, as a business. Not that I really care, but uh, for educational purposes, we're gonna try opening this up. Also, this goes without saying, if you have no idea what you're doing, you've never worked on electronics before, do not open this power supply, por favor. If the capacitors in particular in this unit are not drained properly before working, you could die. It, there's enough charge in some of these caps to, to stop your heart. So just bear that in mind. Uh, also opening this up will probably void your warranty. I'm not sure how that will play out in your particular country, but uh, it's just best practice. If you, if you suspect it's dead, just send it back in for an RMA replacement. Uh, this looks to be a random fluke. I don't think there are many of these B5 units that are failing, although they aren't the best quality power supply. I've used many of them in the past, many variants of this, I should say, with no issue. I'm struggling to get this open. I feel like I'm missing a few screws. Are they under? This tape, possibly? Aha! Uh -huh. There were a couple hiding under here. I had my suspicions. That is more like it. All right. Now we're going to get the rest of you off. There we go. Go ahead and remove this fan. And let's see what we're working with. I'm gonna see if I can't pull this board completely out. A few moments later. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not seeing anything obvious at all. Uh, no swollen capacitors or anything. Uh, just bulging SMDs in general, usually a pretty good sign. No burn marks, nothing on the underside of this board either. It actually looks really clean, which is even more confusing. Again, the power from the wall in this office is clean. And uh, the same power supply that we connected after the fact to show you that the system was in fact working uh, was plugged into the same outlet. So it wasn't an outlet issue. There's probably some issue with SMDs. Uh, I would start probing at this point and then we could probably narrow down what it was and maybe resolder something. EVJ says that these aren't serviceable for the average person and that's denoted all over the power supply itself. They recommend you just send these in and get them replaced. Again, they're so cheap that uh, the amount of time you'll spend trying to hunt parts down, assuming you can even find the issue here and then, you know, resolder, retest, you might as well just spend another 50 bucks and just get yourself another one. Um, if it was a higher end unit, maybe worth the time. But uh, for these cheaper bronze units, you know, 550 watt and around that range, it's not really worth it in my opinion. I also don't see any issues with the cables that were connected to this unit, in case you're wondering. No burn marks, no pins that are pushed out or just outright missing. Uh, all looks really clean here. Not just the 24 pin, by the way, but also the others. Now, one last thing we can check before calling it quits here is this board, which is responsible for, of course, power on and off. 
uh, and the physical connection to the wall. So what we can do is plug our cable in. We're gonna have to be very careful here because this is gonna be, I believe, yeah, it's not transformed. So it's just gonna be raw 120 AC to, uh, to these two wires. But I'm gonna probe them with my meter and see if we get something. If we don't, then it's possible if there are fuses on this board that one of those fuses is blown and that would have been the safety measure that kept the remainder of the power supply uh, intact as well, which would have been pretty cool. But hopefully you can see on camera there, we've got a fresh batch of 120 volt AC. So it's not this board, it's something else on the power supply itself. Basically these two cables here are sending fresh 120 to that main board. Um, there's something wrong with that. Not sure again what it is, but at this point, I've pretty much exhausted as much time as I'm willing to spend on it. Let's go ahead and call it quits. Thank you so much for watching this far into this one. Um, again, I'm very sorry that I can't specifically pinpoint the issue here. It's just not my forte. Now I'm not gonna act like it is. I could put my ring back on. Um, this, uh, this was fun. And I'm actually relieved that it only ended up being the power supply. It wasn't a very expensive unit, so I guess I'm not all that surprised. But uh, it definitely did its job in terms of saving the remaining components in here that all appear to be functioning properly with a replacement higher end unit from Seasonic. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have a broken system and you want a chance to have it fixed for free here on the channel, be sure to submit a form linked in this video description. If you enjoyed watching this one, give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Join us on our public Discord server. Support us on Patreon if you feel like it. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Boy, oh boy. She looks a lot better with custom sleeve cables, I've got to say. Just a, a personal preference, but uh, really like the way this one turned out. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.